Alan, do you know much about the Ungi family? Did you ever interact with them? Criminals need to realise if you make 150k but end up in jail for 10 years, that's 15k per year, Dominic. Well, that question. And I don't really want to bring me past up to do with these Ungies, but not many of these might know. Okay, so I'll just elaborate on it. When I'm in jail, all of a sudden, through my older brother's girlfriend, this little bird starts um, harassing them to speak to me. So she's harassing them to speak to me while I'm ringing the phone from prison. Eventually, I speak to her, and her name was Kate Turney. Not on to do with Shorty. Katie Turney, her name was, right? So she's speaking to me. I'm speaking to her. Didn't, I was avoiding it for ages, no, just jogging on, like, I'm getting on with my jail, jogging on, getting on. Next minute, I ring her. I mean, I'm speaking to her on the phone. I'm speaking to Billy, and he goes, that bird's here now, casing me to speak to you. I say, just put her on. So I'll speak to her for a little bit. Before you know it, I'm getting letters off her. Before you know it, I've got a visit. Because I'm a dead, I don't know much. I'm just getting told of what Billy and his bird told me. She's decent. She works. She doesn't do this and she doesn't do that. And I'm thinking, okay, she sounds half decent. I'll get her up. She's come up. She's had a half decent, well, she's had a decent little body on her. Blonde hair, nice blue eyes. It is what it is. Because I've been on my journey through jail, all of a sudden I'm looking at it as a little bird. Before you know it, she's up every week. All right. So now I've got this Katie coming to visit me every week. Me, blind, goggle eyes, haven't banged a bird since the nurse in Woodhill, just thinking, this is half decent, I'll keep her getting up. Before you know it, I've caught feelings. She's wrote me in. She must have believed I was rich and all this. Well, I had a bit of dough around me. So when you were a bird and when you're in prison, you're just spending it on it for whatever. You want to be relevant if you like. So she's up every week, six or seven months down the line. She's asking me to marry her. <laughs> Fucking, I'm laughing now, but listen, wow, the pain I went through over that horrible mess, like, it was unreal. Anyway, she's she every visit she's coming up, I want you to marry me, I want you to marry me. It's this year. A certain time every so many years, a bird can ask you to marry her. Normally, it's the man's job to propose, but there's one year or something where a girl, I want to marry you, I want you to marry me, I want you to marry me. So, so just shut her up. Don't forget, in prison, my security files through the roof. So to shut her up, I've just said, yeah, okay, you know, just be quiet. Okay, I'll marry you. Shh, don't be speaking about it on every visit. Okay, then, yeah, I'll marry you. I've been bulldozed into this relationship with this bed, all right? So I've said, yeah, okay, I'll marry you, just to shut her up. And she's gone quiet, and I'm thinking, is right. Next minute, a vicar comes to me door. Hello, Mr. G, I believe you want to be married. I said, what do you mean? Oh, your partner's wrote to the chapel and asked us, can we marry her there? I went, what? <laughs> I'm not lying, you know. Honestly, God, la. So now, she's wrote into the prison to the chapel. Asked the chapel, is she allowed to marry me in that chapel? Without me knowing, the first I knew is when the, the vicar's knocked at me door, okay? So now I'm pulled into this process, all right? <laughs> it's hard, la. I'm put, but don't forget, I've been in prison. She, I've caught, I've caught the feelings. I'm like falling in love with this young bird. I'm in my thirties. She's about twenty-seven. Thinking is right. I've got a decent bird for when I get out to settle down with. It's my mind, all right. I was thinking, that's what I was thinking. Decent little bird, get out, set up shop, set up family, and into the into the sun. Are you on it? <laughs> I was naive. So anyway, the chapel, chapel's at my door. I'm thinking, what the fuck? I get on the phone. Have you contacted the prison? Yeah. They've responded saying, yeah. I've said, oh my God. He said, they've got to do security checks. I just went, whew. Just thought is right. There is no way security are going to pass this. All right. There's no way security is going to let some of my family members come into this chapel. They wouldn't let me even have visits off half of them, okay? So I'm thinking it'll never happen. 
eight weeks later, they've granted it. They've granted the wedding. <laughs> so there's me just going with the flow. I'm in a mess anyway. <laughs> I'm stressed out anyway over parole proceedings and all this. And then all of a sudden, I've got this, I've got this wedding day kicking in. I'm going with the flow. I've got me suits. I've got this. There's names on me. They've asked me how many I can allow 10 people in. I thought to myself, you know what? I'll put all the names they won't let in. I'll, I'll, I'll put all the names on that. I know they won't let in be for security reasons. Some of the names have not been allowed to visit me for security reasons. So I go, bam, 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 bam. Brothers, few mates, this, that, and the other. They let them all in. <laughs> I'm not bullshitting you. He let them all in. So now I go to this wedding. I've tied the knots. I'm all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> now for years, I'd had a nice little bit of dough put away for when I got released. You know, not much, but enough. But now I'm married. I'm doing the married man thing. And I am buying of this, buying of that, buying of this. All of a sudden. She tells me she's got a kid to someone else. Didn't even know she had a kid to someone else until about after I was married to her. <laughs> Man, I feel like speaking about it, you know, but it is what it is. You, you mentioned the youngies, and the youngies will come into this situation, all right? So I'm doing what I'm doing. I'm married to this, and I'm, I'm looking after it as much as I can. Do, 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 do. My mind's on the future. A year into it, I'm trying to get divorced from it. She stops visiting me. She's going to Marbella. She's going here. She's going there. She's driving to Weesbourne, driving back to Weesbourne. I'm getting kids getting on me saying, yo, she's banging this. She's driving parcels down to Weesbourne for them. She, in my eyes, she was this nine to five bird who weren't snorting coke. She was decent. And all of a sudden, I'm getting told all this. And it was causing me a major headache. She was causing me murder on the phones, just stressing life out to death. So I'm filed for divorce, a divorce within six months. I couldn't. You've got to wait 12 months and then you've got to go to a, a, an annulment. I do all that. She's refusing to sign the papers. Anyway, it gets to me release date. I get out and I'm thinking, where's this wife of mine? All right. So I'm in that hostel in, in, in Blackburn. Remember the soldiers? And she gets in touch with me. I don't. She manages to get in touch with me and says, "I need to come and see you." So she came and see me. You know where I banged it? <laughs> Honest to God, you couldn't have visitors in the hostel. And I went putting her up, going to an hotel to be locked up at nine o'clock in the hostel. So she come over for a few hours. I took her for a scan. I'm steaming. I'm out of jail. You haven't on yet. It's about three days out of jail. I haven't gotten. I'm steaming the life out of me. You know what I do? <laughs> it would have me, it was here. And this is what spun me on it instantly again. She's dragged me in an empty to a pile of bins, got behind a pile of bins and just pulled the things down. I went, eh. I just went, wow. Done what I've done, red blooded male didn't last long, you know, but it was more than a pump pump and a squirt. I've been masturbating for the majority of my prison, so I was going like a rabbit in headlights. She was getting thrown all over the gaff to the point where she fell on the floor. Get down it, you know what I mean? But anyway, let's just not, you know, I'm joking about it, all right? So it is what it is. Then I don't see her again. I don't see her again, right? She just vanishes again. She was scared of what was coming my way now on free, all right? All of a sudden, I'm getting information that's legit. Whilst I was in jail, I was half disbelieving it because I didn't believe she was a type. Do you understand what I'm saying? But after that episode, in an entry next to a boozer, it just confirmed to me, this is a mess, okay? <laughs> so everything that started coming in, I started taking on board. It came to me that she had been getting banged by Michael Ungi for years. She used to go round to Michael Ungi's house as if she was the Mars mate while Michael Ungi's beard was there. <laughs> and this is where Ungi comes into my life, okay? 
and she still wouldn't sign no divorce papers. I was paying for dough to these solicitors. They were putting bailiffs outside that house for hours and hours and hours, and she wouldn't sign them. She had social services involved with it over a child. So I've gone through my probation officer, give my probation officer the divorce papers. My probation officer has got them to her social worker. Her social worker has given them. She refused to sign them. <laughs> so she just had me on a leech. Now I'm arguing with her to get this divorce. I, I, I'm just arguing. I get my name. No, then she's got my name on her wrist. She used to have my name on her wrist, and in my sick mind, I'm thinking she's my enemies with this, with my name all over it, the little horrible scumbag. So I'm arguing with her to get this divorce. <laughs> but during all that, I start getting this information, and it's all about Michael Ungi banging her for years. She's told me during a little period of where we were okay that she'd been working for this in this fake bake company. And while she's work, working for this fake bake company, she's getting extra wing, extra work off the owners. And that extra work was going to Marbella and selling fake bake. When in reality, she's going to Marbella selling ass for the woman of fake bake. Do you understand? With other girls. And while she's over in Marbella, she's basing with the Kinnerton cartel and their associates. I'm getting ruined. <laughs> I'm not lying, you know, people. I'm not lying. I know it might sound like I'm lying, but at the time it was doing my f nut writing. But that's where I, I, I found a lot of things out about the Vaughns and si situations like that. Through this in brass, <laughs> Katie Turney. <laughs> Crazy, honest to God. But she was. Um... <laughs> I can't believe what I got put through, you know. I just, you know what? I'm a sucker for love, people. That's what I used to be. I used to be a sucker for love. Now my love's well protected. I only give it to special people, mate. And I've only got one real person who's special in my life right now that gets that type of love. And I'm, I'm happy with it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But it was what it was. As soon as I found out Michael Ungi was banging her and she weren't giving me a divorce, I started screaming, yo, Michael Ungi, tell your fair to sign the divorce papers. <laughs> I didn't know. I didn't have a clue. I obviously knew Brian Ungi and all that was from years ago, but I didn't have a clue this Michael Ungi was. Apparently, he's this hard kid, all right? <laughs> and this is around, you know, 2.30, no, 2.16. Yeah, 2.16, 2.17, all this is coming to fruition. And that was a name. She, she was calling herself KTG. <laughs> She's getting banged by nonces. You know the nonce that was doing the rap music about me? He was telling me, I've banged your wife. <laughs> I was like that, making myself, you what, you sick How Could you even sleep with such a nasty piece of shit? But that's what she was doing, getting thrown around the city by all my enemies. <laughs> Dirty, weird, horrible, scatty bird she was, like, fucking hell. But I started screaming, Michael Ungi, rat. Tell, tell your head who's calling herself KTG to get the divorce papers sent, time and sent. And I'm screaming that across my social media platform. So that brought another load of that's coming my way, you know what I mean? <laughs> And this isn't people, this is just what I've gone through since I've got out of custody. <laughs> I can't believe I was married. It's fucking mad. It's crazy. So anyway, it is what it is. That's Michael Ungi for you. He was banging that bird for years. And then it turned out he'd got his own bird. He'd got his own bird pregnant. And he was still banging her. And when she's going down to Eastbourne 
I'm uh, with like 60, 70 grands with whatever in the car and bringing 50 grands back up. And it was for all for Michael Lungi. And every time she was flowing around in the country to all my graft spots, it was all for Michael Lungi. Later after that, it moved on to other grafters from Crocky. You know, what? what's the names from Crocky? She used to move with a gang of girls in Crocky and she was mixing with all them weird kids down there. But what I'd done, I was in a sick, mad mindset. And what I've done, I've followed her once. I'm actually, I've ended up at a house in Crocky, some gay lad's house in Crocky. And I've been getting told about this only and that. And I've watched her go into this house and I'm thinking, you know what? I can get closer. They're all, it's a Saturday night. They're all off the cakes. They're all fucking sniffing the police. I can get closer to this. So I've gone over to the house, over the back garden. You've got some little fat mutt in the garden. Just told her to jog it. And I've gone right over to the kitchen window. And I'm about that close away from the kitchen window. So I put my phone in, in the window and just record them, everything. And you've got them wired. And she always used to be scaffed up, you know. Off the, I never snorted. She used always to be whacked off the coke. You know, them mad faces and that they pull all scatty and that. And she's only on the phone to Michael Nungi. <laughs> So, you know, that's what it is. That's what happens, lad. That's how Michael Lungi came into my life. That's when I started screaming about Michael Lungi. Before I started mentioning him in a few years ago when it came to... I didn't know he was involved in all murders and that with that chungi until a few years ago. So I screamed about him years ago, ba 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 bam over that situation. Then he sort of went quiet. And then when I've been involved in, you know, speaking about unsolved murders and that, his name's come back into the picture. And that's why I started scheming again about him not a few a few years ago. Even the other night I mentioned him, didn't I? 